Hi everyone, Miss Nicole here. I hope that you're all doing well and are staying safe and healthy. I miss seeing all of your faces at school every day. And I'm hoping that by making this video, it's one way that I can see all of you and you can see me as well. Now I know that since we've been at home and away from school, we've been hearing a lot of information about the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. And I know that many of us may have questions and are feeling lots of different feelings. And all of that is totally normal and totally okay. But today I'm here to share a story with everyone that a friend of mine who's a librarian shared with me. I'm hoping that this story can help answer some of your questions, give us some ideas and ways to take care of ourselves and keep others safe and healthy also. And also I'm hoping that along the way it can help us feel at least a little bit better about what's been going on in the world. So the story that I'm here to share today is called Coronavirus, a book for children. And this book is by Elizabeth Jenner, Kate Wilson, and Nia Roberts, illustrated by Axel Scheffler. And they also have a consultant who is a person that is an expert who knows a lot about a subject can give advice and information that is correct and factual. And they are Professor Graham Medley, and they're a professor of infectious disease modeling at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. So coronavirus, a book for children. There's a new word you might have heard. You might hear people talking about it, or you might hear it on the news. This word is the reason that you're not going to school. It is the reason you can't go outside very often or visit your friends. It might be the reason why the grown-up or grown-ups who look after you are at home. The word is coronavirus. But what is it and why is everyone talking about it? What is the coronavirus? The coronavirus is a kind of virus. But what's a virus? Viruses are tiny germs that are so small that you can't see them. They're so light they can float through the air in tiny drops of water, and they can sit on your skin without you feeling them. If some of these germs get inside you, they can use your body to make more germs, and that can make you ill. Do I have germs on me now? Yes, but hardly any of them are dangerous. There are lots of different sorts of coronaviruses, and some of them infect people. If you have been infected with one of these coronaviruses, all you probably had was a snotty nose or a cough. Uh, choo! Bless you. Could be a coronavirus. But when this completely new coronavirus germ gets inside a human body, it causes an illness called COVID-19. When people talk about catching the coronavirus, they're talking about this illness. How do you catch the coronavirus? Because this coronavirus is new, scientists don't know everything about it yet, but they think that there are two main ways that people can catch it. Coronavirus germs live in people's throats and mouths. When someone who has the coronavirus coughs or sneezes or breathes out, the germs come out of their mouth in tiny drops of water. Though you can't see the germs, you can sometimes see these tiny drops. In cold weather, they make a cloud of steam. So if someone accidentally else accidentally breathed in the air with the coronavirus germs in it, they would probably get the illness. It's so cold today. Yes, I can see our breath. So this is one reason why we see many people wearing masks or covering their noses and mouths to protect themselves and others from breathing in air that could contain the coronavirus germs in it. Another reason we see people standing far apart from each other, at least six feet. It's easy to get the coronavirus germs from inside your body on your hands when you touch your nose or your mouth. If the person with the coronavirus germs on their hands uses a door, the invisible germs can live on the handle for hours. When someone else opens the door, they get the germs on their hands too. Hmm, I wonder if there are germs on this door handle. And if they touch their nose or mouth, the germs can get into their body. No! So you can also catch the coronavirus by touching things that someone with the virus has already touched. 
what happens if you catch the coronavirus? Some people, particularly most children, hardly feel ill at all when they get the coronavirus, but they still have coronavirus germs in their body that they could give to someone else by mistake. But I feel fine, mom. This is a big reason why we're all staying inside and at home. When they get the coronavirus, lots of people get coughs and a high temperature. Some people also have a headache or aches all over their body. People are usually ill for a few days, but bodies are amazing things. When a new germ like the coronavirus gets into somebody's body, their body knows that the germ shouldn't be there and starts killing it. I feel really awful. The body has an amazing weapon against viruses called antibodies. Tiny cells in your blood make antibodies to fight each different virus invader. The antibodies catch the viruses, then the blood cells swallow them up and destroy them, and then the person gets better. I'm better now! Each of us has more than 10 billion different kinds of antibody inside us. That means there are more different antibodies inside you right now than there are people in the world. So can we all say hooray for antibodies? So why are people worried about catching the coronavirus? Nearly everyone has a body that is healthy enough to fight the coronavirus. But there are some people who find it harder because their bodies aren't as strong. They might be people who are more than 70 years old or already have other illnesses like cancer that might make their bodies weaker. I need to be extra careful and me. They need more help to fight the coronavirus. This means they have to go to the hospital and they might need to use a special machine called a ventilator to help them breathe. We'll get you to the hospital in no time. However, sometimes even this might not be enough to help them get better. And if that happens, then sadly, they might die. That's why these people really need to stay at home away from anywhere they might catch the coronavirus. I'll dance in my living room instead. They won't be able to have visitors. That might mean you won't be able to go and visit some of your family for a while to help keep them safe. Hi, Granny, how are you today? So how many of you have video chatted like this person or maybe made a phone call or sent a letter in the mail? Is there a cure for the coronavirus? Most people get better from the coronavirus by themselves, but doctors and scientists want to help everyone do that quickly and safely. Doctors don't have a cure for the coronavirus yet because it is a new illness. Some medicines that doctors already know about might help, so they're trying them out on people who are ill. But even if they don't work, scientists are also working on making completely new medicines for the coronavirus that no one has ever had before. I hope this new medicine works. Another thing that scientists are working on is a vaccine. A vaccine is a special medicine that is usually injected into your body while you're healthy. Inside the medicine are weak or dead virus germs. The antibodies in your blood can practice killing these germs so that if you catch that virus, they can start fighting the live virus germs faster. All done. You probably already had some vaccines when you were a baby. So that means you won't get some illnesses. I was vaccinated when I was little, and now I can't get measles. It takes many months to make a new medicine. Before you can give it to lots of people, you have to make sure that it is safe for everyone. So you have to try it out carefully on a few people at a time. Then, when you know it works and is safe, you have to have enough for everyone who needs it. What's it like to be at home all the time? Sometimes being at home with the people you live with can be great fun. You can do things together that you wouldn't normally do when you were at school or when the grown-ups were at work. But sometimes I feel bored. Sometimes I miss my friends. Sometimes I feel angry. And sometimes I feel sad. These are all normal things to feel. And everyone who lives with you probably feels the same way sometimes, even if they try not to show it. Bored. Bored. 
Lord. The grown up or grown ups who look after you might also feel worried. Sometimes they might feel worried about work. Sometimes it might be hard to buy the things that you all need, and that might worry them too. But what if I feel worried too? If you're worried, talk about your worries to a grown up who looks after you. If you are still going to school, maybe you could talk to a teacher or a counselor like me. Or maybe you could talk to a teacher or someone else in your family on the phone or using a computer or tablet. What can I do to help? You are already helping a lot by staying at home, but you can also help by taking extra care to make sure you don't catch or pass on the coronavirus to anybody else. Did you know that viruses are killed by soap? So if you wash your hands really carefully and for long enough, you won't have any coronavirus germs on your hands. You can sing a song while you wash your hands to make sure you are washing them for long enough. Long enough to sing happy birthday twice. So maybe you can sing happy birthday twice with me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear me. Happy birthday to me. And one more time. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear me. Happy birthday to me. But germs can come in and out of my nose and mouth too. If you have to wipe or blow your nose, use a tissue and put it in the bin straight away. Remember to wash your hands too because the coronavirus lives in your snot and it can get onto your hands from the tissue. If you have to cough or sneeze, do it into the inside corner of your elbow, not onto your hand. Then you can't give the coronavirus to other people that way. If everyone does these things, it will make a big difference. What else can I do? Another important thing you can do is to be kind to the people that you live with. Things will be different and perhaps difficult for all of you. If you live with brothers and sisters, you might sometimes find them annoying, but try not to fight with them. Your turn. If you live with grown-ups, maybe you can help them by doing what you've been asked to do or giving them a big hug. Mom has asked us to put our, our toys away. Okay, I'll sort the books. What about my schoolwork? If you're not at school, do your schoolwork. It will help to keep your mind busy so you won't be bored. And then when you go back to school, you will have learned a lot. If you don't have a screen of your own, talk about how you can share screen time fairly with everyone who needs it. And remember, grown-ups who live with you might have to do work as well. If they do, you can help them by not disturbing them when they're trying to work. Then they will be more likely to have time to do fun things with you. Maybe you can make a list of things that you would like to do with them. Shh, Barney, stop barking. What's going to happen next? This is a strange time for everybody and it's happening all over the world. But if we are all careful and we all stay at home, we are doing what we can to stop the coronavirus spreading. And that gives the scientists and doctors time to work out how to cure the illness and maybe stop people getting it all together by using medicines and vaccines. One day quite soon, though nobody knows exactly when, you'll be able to visit people you love who don't live with you, play with your friends, go to school again, and do lots of other things that you enjoy, but that you can't do now. One day, this strange time will be over. Yay! Now we can play together. And we can all say, we did it together. So everyone, I hope that you enjoyed that story. And I want you all to remember that just like our story said, if you're feeling worried or you're feeling any other type of feeling that you'd like to talk about with a grown-up that you live with or that you know and are able to video chat or phone call that's really really great and really important but you're also able to talk with your teachers 
I know that many of you are having meetings with your teachers in the, during the weeks. You can also let your teachers know if you're a student that you'd like to check in with me. You can also let your families know. And for families, you can call me or email me or let your teachers know that you'd like to check in with me to talk about anything. With all of that said, I'm really excited to see all of you on here. And I hope that I'll get to see and hear from more of you soon. Thank you.